Okay. Well, well, welcome everyone again. Thank you for joining us one more week in this parenting tips webinars that we have prepared for you. Uh, today, we are going to talk about boundaries. Uh, when, when we hear the, the word boundary, we typically think of things that we can see or touch, right? Uh, for example, when a ball player's go out of bounds, they cross over uh, a line that is clearly marked, and that brings to our mind uh, a boundary, right? In this regard, uh, boundaries serve uh, to maintain order and give the players a sense of place and purpose. In a similar fashion, boundaries operate in families and impact how they function. Family boundaries define who's responsible for what, and how parents and children interact and how the family relates with the outside world. Uh, family structure is made up of a series of elements that determine the functionality or dysfunction of each family group according to their presence or absence. These elements are hierarchy, roles, rules, sorry, subsystems, and roles, and also boundaries, on which we will focus today. So, it is, a, it is part of a good parenting to set and enforce reasonable boundaries, and, and because they help young people to develop self-control, to be part of our society, and to feel cared for and safe. They also help parents look after themselves and other family members. So boundaries are guidelines between people about suitable behaviors and responsibilities. Boundaries should be clear and reasonable. They need to be consistent and there must be consequences for not respecting them. Good boundaries are unique to each family. They have to be flexible because they change with, with the circumstances. You know, as young people mature, they can become uh, more involved in the setting of boundaries to, uh, to suit their, their new levels of independence. Setting and keeping boundaries can be difficult, for example, with an adolescent, but because they may be challenging parental authority, and wanting independence. So at that moment, new skills may be needed to negotiate good working boundaries with young people. Boundaries are also fair and reasonable. And they have to be appropriate for the age and maturity of the young person. As young people mature, there can be more freedoms, but there should also be age appropriate responsibilities. Boundaries are often simply understood rather than spell out. It, it is when a problem behavior arises that, that it becomes necessary to make them clear and, and the consequences for breaking them clearly. Where there are two parents, it is common to have different views about boundaries. Parents uh, must work together to find a reasonable and fair approach that they both can accept and enforce. Let's see some examples of family boundaries. For example, how to treat other family members, use of screens, having guests in the house, sharing housework, going out where, when, with whom, and how often, who pays for what. So, you might be thinking, are boundaries and rules the same? They, they may sound a lot like, you know, the same thing, right? But no, they are not the same. I'll start with the basics. The definition of a boundary is a limit of a subject or, or, or sphere of activity or a line that marks the limit of an area. 
a list of synonyms for boundary might be order, frontier, further line, limits, margins, edges, fringes. On the other hand, a rule is one of a set of explicit or understood regulations or principles governing conduct within a particular activity or sphere. A list of synonyms that I found for, for rules are regulation, ruling, directive, order, act, law, statute, sta sorry, statute, statute, edict, canon, mandate, command, requirement, guideline, and direction. So, did you notice something? Boundary is not a synonym for rule and vice versa. In fact, the only synonym that is shared is, is the word order. Both of them refer to spheres of activity, but a rule regulates what happens within that sphere. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, the rule, which I, 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 we know that are also important and you might, might want to know more about them. Uh, use the following criteria to develop effective rules for your child, since you know, rules and boundaries work together. Rules have to have clarity. Each rule needs to be expressed in a clear manner and it's the consequences for not uh, following that rule has to be expressed even in a clearer way. Using words that your child understands. Rules have to be concrete. They have, they, uh, uh, try to establish rules that describe how your child should behave rather than how he or she shouldn't behave. Rules need to be consistent. Whether your child is with you or with another adult, grandparent, babysitter, your partner, etc., rules should always, always be the same. Once you've established a consequence, don't change your mind. You won't be taken seriously if consequences are not enforced. Rules need to be coherent. Before establishing a rule, think about whether you can actually enforce it. You are an important role model for your child, so you should also follow the same rules. Rules have to be age appropriate. Sometimes it's okay to have different rules for different members of the family. These might be appropriate taking into account their different ages or stages of development. And one that I will say is one of the most important consequences. When rules are broken, Ideally, there should be consequences that are directly related to your child's behavior. Consequences let your child know where he or she has gone wrong, how to correct his mistake, and what behavior to work toward. So, coming back to boundaries, boundaries de delineate and maintain needed borders and separations making differentiation possible at every level. Boundaries both contain and preserve the integrity of what they are safeguarding, be that physical, psychological, emotional, social, or even spiritual. This is a definition by Robert Augustus Masters. So coming back to the example of the fence, we will say that, uh, for example, a no trespassing sign on a fence might be the rule. The fence itself is the boundary where that rule exists. So now let's see some scenarios. Carol knows how to get her own way. She pushes me until I give in or just does it anyway. I know I should be firm, but some days it just seems too hard. Have you ever feel like this? You can use a chat or unmute yourself to make comments uh, or to respond to these questions. Have you ever feel like this? What do you think might be happening here? 
What do you suggest? How would you manage this situation? You can use a chat or an, unmute yourself. This is like a, like a parent's perspective. Any volunteers? Okay, well, let's see scenario two, okay? Matt doesn't finish any of his Zoom classes. He leaves the meeting or turns off his audio or video so the teacher can't see him or talk to him. He is not completing the assignments because he lacks information and he doesn't even follow the ba basic rules of the class. What do you think might be happening here? regarding boundaries, rules. Mm -hmm. Patricia sharing the chat. I think in the last one, the lack of communication and even hierarchy in the family is notable. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like this child is, uh, have made a decision about what how he wants to participate in these classes, right? And the lack of communication, maybe the rules, even though the, maybe the teacher have, have tried to establish clear rules about you know, the, the way we connect to some classes, to some lessons, uh, maybe th those rules are not reinforced at home by parents. The child is left alone to make these kind of decisions and they do not correspond to him to be taken. Thank you, Patricia, for sharing. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. What about scenario one? Have you ever feel like that? Like, like tired? I, I can sense from what this parent is sharing here that he or she might be tired. Uh, trying to be firm, but sometimes it's hard to be, you know, consistent. It's sometimes we as adults, we have tough days and those days are difficult, of course, says Orly. We all have been there, yeah. Any suggestion to manage, to, to cope with this situation when you feel like this? How do you, what do you do? I remember from another webinar that we, we, we had, uh, I think it was from Master 3, some parents were talking about guilt, about feeling guilty, and maybe want feeling that, that emotion might, um, Mike may, may appear when you feel like you, because you're so tired, you're so exhausted, and uh, you, you feel guilty that you, that day you couldn't manage things the right way, right? Uh, Orly says, I'm very honest and speak frankly to my sons. Manisha is sharing, communicate with your child, try to understand underlying emotions and remain consistent in your approach. Patricia is also sharing, usually if I give in, I let them know that I am doing it because I'm tired and do not want a fight. If it is not a serious issue, last, last Saturday, each of the boys ate five brownies instead of one. Right. Okay. Communication. I can see here uh, on those three comments that communication is fundamental, right? Those, those, uh, so that the communication with children also let them know I am not perfect. Uh, today I'm not feeling uh, on my 100%. Uh, and let's, let's make it work together. Okay? 
thank you for sharing. So now, uh, let's talk about types of boundaries. Salvador Minushin, the, the founder of Structural Family Therapy, uh, believe that families must operate with appropriate boundaries in order to maintain healthy relationships. Minushin describes three types of boundaries. Uh, the first one is diffuse. In, in families with diffuse or enmeshed boundaries, there is, a, there is little independence between family members. These are overly involved families in which there's a blurring of the line between parents and children. Parents act like their children's friends and children run the risk of, of becoming too involved with their parents. Each individual's emotions, emotional state is dependent upon how the other members of the family are feeling. In this environment, personal emotional control is very difficult. For example, let's say uh, Reeve, a kid named Reeve will be allowed to go to bed whenever his parents went to bed and perhaps even sleep in the same bed with them. Another type of boundary is rigid, rigid boundaries occur when family members are isolated or, or disengaged from one another. In rigid families, communication and emotional expression are very difficult. In these families, there is little respect for the individuality of the people in them. A rigid boundary in this regard will, will have, for example, Reeve going to bed at 7 p.m. until he is 18 years old. In this scenario, there's no room for Reeve's voice or an allowance for his individual growth. According to Minushin, highly functioning families have clearly defined boundaries in them. Clear boundaries define the authority of the parents while allowing the children to develop as appropriate for their age. In Reeves' example, who by the way is around eight years old, he goes to bed at 8.30 p.m. each night and by setting this boundary, Reeves is given a structure that enables him to feel secure in the world and get the rest he needs. Of course, events arise where the 8.30 p.m. limit is not realistic, and in these situations, Reeve is given the reasons why an exception is being made and returns to the regular routine as soon as possible. So, now how we set clear boundaries, okay? The first step is being the bad cop. One of the most difficult parts of being a parent is knowing when to say no. Generally speaking, once a child learns to speak and understand language, any given parent soon reaches to the point when they start saying no or stop, no, don't do that, put that away. And just about every sentence they say to the child begins with not or no, not inside, no, you can't do that there, not on the couch, etc. Single parents, have it particularly hard because there's not much of a chance to play the good cop, bad cop with, with the other parent and, and, and all of the discipline falls on them. Although saying no can be extremely tiring and fr frustrating and can feel quite bad at times, parents should rest assured that it is absolutely essential aspect of parenting. It is an absolutely essential aspect of, uh, aspect of parenting and that what they are doing when they say no to their children is one of the single best things they can do for their child, especially when their children are young. The earlier, the better. Setting boundaries, the earlier, the better. The thing that is happening when a child hears no is that they are learning boundaries. Boundaries learned at home early in life are the first exposure a child has to the world as it exists outside the home. And learning boundaries from an early age enables children to integrate themselves more easily into the various social situations that they will encounter as they grow and mature. First at home, then at school, and then in society. 
without an, ad, an, added, uh, an adequate and reasonable exposure to rules and boundaries at home, a child will have a hard time with the rules and boundaries they encounter at school. For parents, the key to setting boundaries is not so much in actually saying no, it's, it's knowing how to say no. And now we're gonna talk about the auto, authority, I have problems with this word, the authority uh, approach. Recent research into parenting styles have shown that there are three primary approaches to raising children. With some variations, the three styles are known as the authoritarian, the authoritarian style, and the indulgent style. If, if you want to know more about this approach, uh, the next slide has more information and a link that we're gonna, as, as usual, we're gonna upload it to the Med Counselor's website where you can access these resources. And there is a link that will take you to a, a web page with uh, a description of how to accomplish this approach. Uh, for, for parents with the authoritarian style, everything is black and white. These parents rarely explain rules and consequences. And this is the classic my way or the highway approach. In the authoritative <laughs> style, parents set firm boundaries, but take the time to explain the kids the whys and wherefores of the rules. There may be some negotiation around the rules, but for most part of, of these parents, uh, they stick to their guns and kids understand what the rules are and why the, their consequences are in place. On the other hand, in the indulgent style of parenting, there are few rules and even fewer consequences. So this one, the authori authoritative approach, okay, I, I got it finally. <laughs> it's, the, it's the, according to research, is the most effective of these three parenting styles. And another tip is setting kids up for success. Kids eventually grow up and will leave the nest, and that's the cycle of life, right? To adequately prepare them for life as adults, kids need to have a solid understanding of rules and consequences. Uh, because that's how society works. Out in the world, we call rules laws, and everyone knows they come with serious consequences. So it's a parent's job to give kids the first experience with these concepts. So this was the slide I was talking to you, how to take the authoritative approach, understanding the difference between discipline and punishment, it's not the same. Be firm, but loving, and don't act out emotion. If you want to know more about this, there's a link here where you can access more information. So, Oh, sorry, let's wrap up. Boundaries are important for young kids to learn from parents because they are the first stepping stone in how an individual gradually learns to abide by the vast set of written and unwritten rules that make up modern society. Set clear boundaries and know which are negotiable and which are not. Start setting boundaries from an early age and try to be firm about them. Don't get aggressive or shout out or throw a tantrum like your child. Just tell them firmly that you won't tolerate any kind of tantrums about important boundaries, such as bedtime, study time, play time, etc. Be firm and carry out any consequence you said you will carry out. Be consistent. And it's very important that you recognize your child's act of pushing boundaries as being entirely normal behavior and don't take it as personal insult or attack, okay? So, um, I would like to finish with this quote, no family is perfect in this regard. In truth, no family is perfect in any regard. What we are striving for is not perfection, but a family defined by love, respect, and commitment to one another's individual growth and the health of the family unit. It's an endeavor that takes time, patience, and practice. And it's an endeavor that within your reach. This was said by Paul Huckamayer. Now, uh, well, if you want to know more, there are some additional resources on the webpage. 
interesting articles to dig in more about this topic. And now we're open for questions and answers. You can unmute yourself or use the chat. Questions, comments, personal experience regarding boundaries, rules, discipline in general. Hi, Mr. Nicel. Hello, welcome. Hi. What about like, you know, when they when they challenge you all the time, you know, and you and you take them punishment, for example, okay. I take away your PlayStation. Okay, I don't care. I take away your phone. Okay, I don't care. So, you know, what what kind of that's you give them a punishment thinking that where it really hurts but they if they do start challenging and acting that way i mean what can you do if it if it's not working yeah well regarding rules and consequences uh we we recommend to establish natural consequences for the behavior um yeah i know that sometimes we tend to remove those things that they like reduces their, you know, their, their screen times, take away their, their PlayStations or, or things they, or their, or their toys. And sometimes they show up this attitude of, I don't care, but do you really, do you really think they don't care? What do you think about that? No, I do believe they care, but you know, it doesn't work because I, I feel it gets them a little bit more rebel. That's why. Yeah. And, and it, and, and as I said at, 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 at the end, uh, just the last slide, uh, Pushing boundaries is a natural behavior. They will try to do that to see if they can get, you know, if they can salirse con la suya, if they can change your mind. Like you say, oh, oh, you don't care. Well, okay, take it and use it. I'm gonna find another consequence. So they are trying to push the limits to see what, what they can get. So uh, I will say, if you know that because you're, their, their, their mother and you know how much they, they care for their PlayStation or whatever toy you are taking away, stay, stay uh, firm on that consequence. If, if, you, if that's a natural consequence and you, there's a previous agreement on, on that, um, and it, just ignore those comments because they are trying to, to see if they change your mind. And remember that pushing boundaries is also a way to teach them to be more critical, to, to develop their critical thinking and negotiate. They are, with that, they are trying to develop their negotiation skills. So uh, just ignore it and move on. If you said, you decided that's a consequence, that, that, that is, that, that's it. And try to send with a body language. Well, if you don't care, well, I don't care either. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Bachista, can I? Mm -hmm. It's Christina Schmidt. And my question is related to the to this one. It's like sometimes uh, I have the rule that they, if they do all the homeschooling, they are gonna have uh, half an hour of Nintendo uh, per day. And what's happening? Uh, start happening is that. Uh, Eduardo, uh, like he didn't finish the, he didn't go to the second Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. He turned off the Zoom, whatever. Something happened in the beginning of the day, and then he just decided that uh, no, so I don't have Nintendo anymore, so I'm not gonna do the rest of the day. So mm -hmm. I tried to change it, and I said, "You are gonna have like five minutes up for each." Uh, each period that you accomplish. And then he said, oh, I already have 15 minutes, so I'm not doing anymore. <laughs> what do you suggest for this situation? <laughs> well, that is a clear maneuver of manipulation and trying to negotiate the consequence with you, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, well, if you take this away from me, well, I'm not gonna do this. Uh, and it, and what they need to understand is that, like, if they think that not doing uh, the the schoolwork or not co getting connected to the to the meeting or to the class or whatever, it's it's a it's a that's going to be a personal consequence for them because they are 
He is the student. That's his responsibility. Because at young ages, they, they confuse what it's like, what affects me or what affects my, my mom or my dad. I'm going to do this because I think it's going to hurt you. But at the end, it's helping them understand that the, the, the real person that is affected by not co connecting to the lesson, it, it's him because he's going to miss instructions. He's going to miss the, the, the class. And then he's not going to be able to know what to do. And then he's going to be responsible to give the teacher an explanation of why he was absent. So uh, it's turning, you know, the, the flipping the tortilla for them and telling them that that's what they have. It's their responsibility. And there's going to be another consequence if they don't, if they avoid not doing something as a response of, of something that, that you already established as an agreement. And that's the thing with rules and agreements. They have to be uh, previously established with them so they can know what to expect. If, if this doesn't happen, this is the consequence for not following this, this, this rule. Uh, and, and I think maybe talking about rules can be another topic for a future webinar because there's a lot of information about rules and kids are always trying, you know, to, to, to find a way to, to, to break rules and to push the limits. And it, I think will be great if we can discuss further about this, but you know, firm and consistent, it's my advice for you and, and negotiating with them and helping them understand that they are affected with those choices. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, okay, uh, Ms. Roxana already responded to Patricia. Uh -huh. Ms. Roxana, you wanna add something? Hello, everyone. No, I was just mentioning um, regarding rules and agreements. Agreements might become rules, but the difference is that, for example, when we do classroom agreements, students participate in the process of creating those. And one example of rules that are not agreed with them is like every student needs to wear a hat when playing outside during recess. So that, is, that wasn't agreed, that's just a school rule. And of course we can explain them the why, why we do this, but we, they didn't participate in the process of establishing that rule as they do with the classroom agreements. So basically when, when we set those rules in the classroom, they, they share their opinions and they have a say. And there's other rules that, they, that is decided between the administration team and are not called agreements because of that. So yeah, okay. at, at home, you may have both. Uh -huh. At home, you may have rules that you establish as adults, and you may also have agreements that in which they participate, and uh, they, those might become family rules as well, but were agreed with them since the beginning. Exactly. Excuse well, me, we, we, are running, we are running out of time, oh. Ms. We have less than a yes. minute. I don't want okay. the recording to, you know, stop yes. all of a sudden. Yes. We want to thank everyone for your presence here. We appreciate your company and we, we hope you find this helpful. Let, uh, we hope to see you next week for a new webinar, Parenting, Parenting Tips. Bye.